I've already explained to you um, on the calculation part of the perceptron algorithm, right? Uh, we have learned about perceptron and then we have already done the exercise for the uh, logical uh, operation of N operation and O operation, right? Okay, but uh, I sorry, I'm sorry, I've missed your previous class in uh, last week, right? Um, okay, so before we continue with our uh, class session, do you, do you have any question that you would want to ask in regard to what we have already learned? Okay, so if you don't, I have a question. Um, ah, uh, huh. Yes. For Come the step activation, why did we um, exclude the bias here? For the uh, again, the step activation. Why did we exclude the bias? Step activation is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Do you mean the uh, the first step? This one. Uh yes, because I've checked for sigmoid function. We include the bias, but for the step function, we don't include it. I see. This one. Uh, are you? implying with the activation function uh, yes the activation function yes mm. okay so let me explain first right uh, i'll put aside your question before i i uh, i answer your question um, but i would want to do a quick revision to all of you um, can anybody uh, explain again uh, the steps of perceptron that we have already gone through any volunteer the initialization of the weights. Okay. It? Okay. Good. First step is value. Alpha value. The learning rate. Uh -huh. Okay. Then. And the bias, including. Do we include what's, the bias here? What's the next step? Activation. Okay. The next step is activation. Uh -huh. And then continued with. Weight training. Weight training. After weight training. We update the weights. Assuming that the error is not one. Okay, and then after that? If the error is zero, then we don't need to update the weight. Mm -hmm. So we finish at that, I think. Mm -hmm. You finish at that. All right, anybody else that wants to help Kamaru? Last step is finish. iteration. Iteration. Yes. Come again, Haikal? Input is zero. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so uh, I think because I missed your class, all right, so your uh, memory is all jumbled up together, right? So let's let's get back to um, the basics first, all right? So I think um, most of you has gotten a grasp on on uh, the, the processes of, of uh, Perceptron. All right, so, but let me um, explain a bit further, right? So that you would understand better, right? So I think you all have have gotten a hang of it, right? So today's uh, session should uh, make you understand uh, perceptron better, right? So first of all, uh, before I can answer um, Kamarul's uh, question. Right, I'll I'll get back to you that with that question. I promise, but I want to explain about the step first. Right. So basically, uh, when you create an algorithm, you have steps. Right. <clears throat> you have procedures. Right. One by one. And uh, if you learn from different uh, books and different uh, lecturers, right, they will have uh, uh, different steps altogether. But basically. It's the same thing, right? This is, you will go through the same processes, okay? Uh, to make it easy, I've already um, uh, segregated the, the perceptron processes into four major steps, okay? So there's four major steps that you have to remember. So this is a, a reference to the book that I've already given to you, the Nat Gabitsky book. Inside that book, it is stated that 
perceptron has four steps all right but if you look into other books some other books may uh, uh, split up the step into a more uh, in detail steps right uh, but uh, to to make it easy i'm i'm using this one all right so the first step is initialization second one is activation the third one is weight training and the last one is iteration you have to remember the the major steps first all right so then we'll go back to what, what is actually initialization okay initialization is where you set up all the parameters you set all the variables so that you can do the calculation for the perceptron algorithm right it's, it's like something that uh, when you start uh, creating your own program or you want to do some sort of uh, equation you need to set up the variable first before you are able to do the calcul calculating processes right for example if i want to if i have uh, an equation okay a, a linear equation for example um let me get my hold on bear with me give me one minute okay uh, i want to plug in my my sketch pad okay all right so imagine Imagine if I have a function fx equals to um, x um, plus two x, for example, right? So this is this is my linear equation, right? So I'll I'll have something like this. So when x is one, so I'll get the value um, 3 here right okay if x is 1 so and for if i want to iterate the process because i want to see the graphs for 5 6 so i'll get something um, 2 times 2 is 4 6 so i'll get 6 here times 3 is 6 so I'll get 8 here and so forth right so I'll get some sort of um, a linear graph right so to do this I need to set up my variable right so I need to where is hold on I think it's disconnected okay um okay that's why Okay, so in order for you to uh, do the processes of calculating the fx, you need to set up the variables, all right? So all these are your samples. Okay, so you need to set up your samples, you need to set up your variable so that you can do the calculation. So this is a constant, right? So the constant is probably equal to your threshold value too. so before you can do all this again uh, for the first step of your perceptron step number one you step set all the uh, weight values the threshold the alpha and etc all right okay so the next step what's the next step okay the next step is to do the activation Okay, what is activation? Previously, I hope you already understand what is initialization. Initialization is setting up the variables and the uh, parameters, the values, all right? So, Sartron is a um, activation. Step number two is a process of, of uh, producing an output for the neural network. Right, imagine you have a neural network here. Sorry. Imagine you have a neural network here. And okay, this is your neural network. 
uh, I'll just draw sorry I'll just draw one uh, one process here this is a process okay a and n process so you fit in your input and whatever that is already set up earlier inside the neural network all the weeds the threshold the bias okay which is set up earlier during the initialization process uh, will help to do the calculation to produce an output okay so this process all this process is the activation okay activation of the neural network okay further understanding the activation part you need to know how uh, the, the perceptron produces its output okay so the perceptron produces its output by um by looking into the activation functions okay so different activation function will help you to produce different uh type of output okay like um kamarul have already asked before previously okay uh, previously previously kamarul Previously, Kamaru asked, why is the bias excluded from the step activation? Right. Is that your, your question just now? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So, again, let's look at the activation function first. The balik pada activation function. All right. So, activation function is actually, tengok kat sini, dia kata, what are activation function? So, activation function decide whether the neuron should be actively, oh sorry, should be activated or not by calculating the weighted sum. So, what's the weighted sum? So, the weighted sum is actually, should look like this. Alright, so let me delete this. Okay. Don't worry, let's learn together, right? So this is where you try to understand how Septron works. So I have this output here. Why? So imagine uh, this neuron Y is equivalent to something that I told you earlier, like Fx. Okay, so we change this. We change Y to Fx. Right. So Fx is when we want to calculate so let's say this the variable name is x1 and x2 with one and with two so that we can understand that with one is connected with x1 with two is connected to x2 now the y in that was mentioned in in this slide okay, is the weighted sum okay so the weighted sum is actually the summation of input i why input i because the i i traits okay it can be i1 i2 i3 and so forth lah, depending on how many neuron that you have and then it is multiplied with with i okay so the dot represent multiplication lah. Kalau you tak, you tak nak, takut you confuse eh. Okay, so I'll just Okay, kita ubah So, multiply Okay, uh, sebab tu tak, tak nak buat X ni, sebab sini X ni eh. So, this is multiply X, I multiply with with I minus the threshold This was the equation that was explained in Slide number eighteen. Okay, nampak tak ni? Ada bias ni. Ini yang you tanya kan? Kenapa tiba-tiba bias ni hilang? Right? Okay. So for this example, imagine you have another neuron here. Acts like an input. Dia sama je macam input. Sir. Yes. 
Are you still sharing your screen? Hey, this, the screen is cancelled, is it? Yeah, I think you misclicked. Mm -hmm. All right, so my entire screen. Okay, can you see? Uh, yes, we can. Okay, let me erase this first so that I can explain again. Did, did you see when I explain this one? When I explain uh, this one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, never mind. Okay, so imagine about bias, kan? Kita nak tengok dekat sini, right? This one, right? And you want to know whether, why, why the bias disappeared, right? Am I right? This one? Is, is that, uh, uh, the one yeah. that you've, you've confused with this one, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so in order for you to to get until this, right? So usually, uh, imagine you you have this this another neuron here that acts like like an input, but the input is a um a single value, okay, a constant that doesn't change, okay, and uh, normally, the bias would be either negative one or plus one. Okay. In some cases, most bias are of a negative value. All right. Most bias are of a negative value. So, if let's say um, in an exam question where it doesn't state uh, the bias for perceptron, we just imagine that uh, for that perceptron. Um, there's actually a bias here, which holds off the value of negative one. And it has a, a threshold value, also a constant, all right? The threshold value is also a constant of, of some value, uh, of some values here, okay? So we will set up the value later. So the, the, the threshold value is a constant and the bias is also a constant. Okay, because the bias is is uh is always a constant, it doesn't change, only the weight value change and the input change. So these are the values that will change. Okay, and um because uh if you if you look at it, right, if I rewrite the function fx to a longer one, x1 times with one plus because it's a summation here right Ta plus x2 times with two okay imagine this is x3 i'll just change this to x3 right so it's actually plus x3 times and i change this to with three with three okay so because this is a constant and it won't change so i can change this equation i write it down here let me write it again x1 times with one plus x2 times with two okay now it will be like this minus one times threshold Right, because it's a threshold is also a constant that we set up later lah. Okay, and then again, when I simplify the equation, x1 times with one plus x2 times with two, now this will become minus threshold. See, because one times, negative one times the threshold, it will become minus threshold, right? So that's why, the bias disappeared right because we simplified the the equation to something like this okay did i answer your question uh yes yes you did uh, i think that okay. clear things up yep thank you all right so so but but this is not the final output for the perceptron okay you we considered we considered this as y in 
okay and this value this value is then sent to the activation function as its parameter so depending on how you would want to produce your output in our case here is an n or o operation kan n or o operation because our output is a binary value of either 0 and 1 so our neural network uh, will probably use a binary step activation because binary step will produce either 0 and 1 here about that depending on how uh, the y in is calculated and sent to the uh, step activation lah, which is x ni x in adalah y in okay so if the y in is greater or equal to zero it will return one otherwise it will return zero right so that that is the second step panjang ceritanya kan nak explain panjang panjang lebar second step ni okay but again don't get confused because this is a very simple equation it's a simple equation because there's more complex uh, equation coming on uh, in our next uh, session okay so this is what we have gotten into lah okay the idea again to simplify everything the idea is that we want the network to produce an output given the input okay now input to you masukkan network keluarkan output that's it how to do it this is how you do it do this equation all right, the second step. Uh, tadi tu second step. Uh, uh, sorry, the third step. When the network has already produced an output, now we can uh, we can calculate the error. All right, we can calculate the error because uh, now we have the actual output of the neural network. So this is this the the rate y actual is actually comes from the second step. Uh, ni y actual y p ni okay activation ni is y actual where does the y desired comes from siapa boleh bagi tahu ni from the ni. table the binary yes. table from the table so usually um, for this exercise is the table lah uh, usually if you have a, a larger uh, samples right you have the data kan uh, and the data can reach up to uh, thousands of rows and columns all right so your uh, y desired will be the label of your data what is a label label is when like when you do classification uh, if you do for example you want to uh, classify uh, from a face you want to classify whether uh, it's a female or a male so the label would be male or female it can be only two value you can you can even use binary zero for female one for male for example okay so this uh, binary value will indicate the gender of the given input which is the image of a face okay so again depending on how would you want to define your label then um you will decide which uh, activation function you would want to use later All right okay so with that being explained step number three and so error is calculated as y desired comes from your data from the label minus y actual which is comes from the actual output of the neural network and then we calculate the weight change uh, weight change is calculated after the error is calculated so uh, if you can see step three has small step small uh, uh, processes all right so that's why some sometimes when you learn from other uh, lecturer or when you learn from uh, books different books they will separate this into uh, one uh, different step all right step three calculate error for example and then step four will to will be calculating the weight change this will be step five right so don't worry about it it's the same thing uh, you only have to know uh, the process more clearly all right 
So, uh, in step two, three, after you calculated the error, you can actually calculate the weight change. So, what is weight change? Apa itu weight change? Uh, weight change is a marginal difference of change from the uh, current weight to a final weight. Uh, if you look into this example, kan, tengok table ni, you have initial weight here and you have another one which is the final weight here. Kan, betul tak? Okay, so, um, so what happened is that when we calculate the marginal difference, okay, so that marginal difference will be added up to the initial weight to produce the final weight. So if the weight change is a negative value, the weight change will be reduced. If it's a positive value, the weight change will be increased, all right, De depending on um, how would uh, the marginal difference would be, all right. Okay, step number four, iteration. So when you have already done updating your weight and all, uh, the perceptron will iterate. All right, so it will iterate the step number two with the newly updated weight and it will be repeated until it reaches zero for all possible input and output pair. All right, which we get this kind of table. All right, okay. So today I want you to show you um, how to create a program actually. There's a plus to make it more clearly okay, so, uh, let's, uh, in our previous week i've already shown you um, an example um, so i just quickly search Perception. i think it's this one okay uh, let me change this this is from the previous class uh, so So I'll change this to something different. So now this is a step, a step function. Similar to this one, this should be a step function. This should also be a step function. Right. What happens here is that I have already created save a simple program using C++ because you've you've learned C++ before, right? Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let me find let me find another C++ activation. I didn't save it. Uh, is it activate? No, or probably it will be step and step. Right, so I've uh, I I want to exclude this uh, from this program because I want to explain about activation function. All right, so this is an activation function um, that I've already created a, a function or a method with the name sign. Okay, that has a parameter x, uh, and x is a float, but uh, the sign with always uh, sorry this is this should, shouldn't be sign this should be step okay so the step function um will always return an integer of either zero or one okay i didn't use boolean okay i didn't use boolean because um i want the return value to be calculated by the main program later Right, so if I, I use boolean, it will return either true or false, right? So I don't want that. So that's the reason why I use integer. So it will return either one or zero depending on the parameter of x. So th this is actually y in, actually. Right? So when I execute this, okay, so from here, if you can see the, from the main program, the y in is zero. So it will return one, right? So let me execute this, compile run. Sorry, sign, okay, because sign is not, should be step. 
Sigma pi run. Okay, so I have changed this to y in. There, you have it, All right? Because it's a zero. So anything that is zero or greater, it will produce the output one. So otherwise, if I put a negative value here, 80.5, for example, run, it will produce a, why does it produce one? Mm, greater equal return one. Oh, sorry, shouldn't be Zero here. Huh. Why in should be here, pening lah, kan? So save, execute, compile run. There you have it, zero. Okay. So it's the same thing. So the same thing in our perceptron here. Uh, we will use this later in our activation, all right? So continue with this, all right? Yeah, and let me turn on my air conditioner. It's getting hot in here. Right, can you hear me? Yes, we're doing a Slow sikit daripada tadi. Okay, let's see. 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 Okay, let's Again. Initialization, right? Okay, so initialization for initialization. Um, again, uh, like I've ex explained earlier, initialization is where we would initialize all the variable that is needed, right, in order for us to do the calculation later. So Initially, this is the variable that we need, the input x1 and x2. Okay, that is tulis dari sini. Y desired and Y actual. Error, delta width 1 and the delta width 2. All right, so all the uh, input, the Y desired, the Y actual and the error are defined as an array because I have four samples. So I uh, foresee that I need an array in order to store all these variable because I will use it again and again later. All right. However, the, the weight change, the delta weight, I don't have to store. All right. So that's the reason why I'm using only a simple variable for delta weight. And then the next step would be to set up all the samples. So the samples is like in the table lah, that I've shown you earlier. All right. And then uh, these are the weight value. Sorry, yes, yeah, good job. Let me. All right. Um. So the the weight value are set up like similar like our exercise, our previous exercise, right? So, uh, but um, normally this should be a random value, right? Like what in the notes I've already explained. So the weight value are set up with a random value of uh, a suggested range of negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. That is only a suggested value. So why uh, it is suggested with that value, I'll explain this later, right? And then the threshold is set at um, again with the same amount of range, right? But but this is uh, a constant, right? It won't change. And then 
um, a small alpha value is set up, right? This is the value that we have to decide, okay? And the suggested uh, alpha would be 0 0.1 lah in this case. Okay, so sum of error is uh, um, a flag variable. So for me to check whether um, all four iteration contain any error or not, right? So if there's an error, it will uh, turn to zero lah. Okay. Right. So the next step is to uh, do the activation. Can do that. So the activation, before we do the activation, we need to understand that the fourth step of the neural network, fourth step, step yang keempat, this one. So the first, fourth, and the last step of the uh, perceptron algorithm is to simply repeat step number two. So because we want to repeat step number two, we should know that when we initiate the second step, which is the activation, the loop will start here. Okay, uh, loop two akan berlaku semasa kita initiate our first activation. Okay, so that's why uh, my while loop is uh, started before the the activation happen, right? And the while loop will only stop if all four samples that was given to the network produce a zero error. Maknanya untuk first uh, sample zero error, second sample zero error, until the fourth sample also zero error, right? So the activation is calculated as, as below lah because we already created the step function, okay? So the y in is calculated as follows, macam ni, okay? This is not the best uh, program or it's not the efficient most efficient program because you have to calculate uh, manually this is a bit manual right x1 times with one x2 times with two because i want you to see the processes all right but uh, if you have a very good um, program you you should do this calculation uh, automatically right this this equation can also do can be automated lah. so because in this, of course, in this example, the input is only two. So I want you to see the equation, the equation, right? So I write it up like this, right? But this is not the best way to do it, right? And then minus the threshold value, which is the constant. And then, um, uh, we calculate the error, okay? Calculate the error. All right, so can we uh, rest for a while? Um, okay, so thank you. Code here. I'll let the code open so that you can see. Uh, you see me. Try figuring out the code first while uh, I have a 10 minute break, All right? Okay, sir. Right, okay, sir.
Tak okey tu aku salah sahur tu tadi Si mana ni tu? Kal. Okay, aku tidur dulu bagi asyik 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 tidur aku tidur Kita asyik dalam kelas Michael Oh Michael Ya yeah. Purposely on mic ke? Hey, ya yeah, doh, sorry doh <laughs> Aku set yang biasa lah yang Eva on, Ayan on, style tu aku ambil yang normal atas sekali speed aku buat satu Haa uh, tu je lah, tak speed tu boleh je buat dua sebenarnya tapi Tak satu pun dah ok aku ni, eh. tak rasa panas lah, sejuk kan eh. Tak rasa kaya dalam aircon lah eh, sebab dia memang direct kat aku ni eh. Asal yang naik macam tu tu Dia macam Dia tak apa lah aku tak perlukan kesejukan yang sangat lah Yang ni pun dah sejuk lah tu
Yang satu lagi night mode dia macam dia perlahankan sikit bunyi dia. Aku tak tahu lah. Dia macam dia speed sama macam nombor dua tapi uh, dia punya tu perlahan sikit bunyi dia. Itu lah kalau yang yang night mode sana. Tak ada yang dia fuuuuh. Eh, haa macam tu. Oh, man. Champion attacks. Next is to preserve hierarchy. What Riot means by this is to make it clear what is most important in a fight. An ultimate ability, for example, is supposed to be flashy because they want players to notice it. In a specific champion kit, the visual effect of their ultimate should naturally be more prominent and clearer than the rest of it. The moment you notice that ability pop, it should be clear to the viewer that it's something important. And the last point is to keep noise to a minimum. Audio as well as visual distractions can add up. Too many effects can make team fights really hard to track, and at the end of the day, what's most important is knowing what's going on in terms of gameplay. Champion, there are also two champion shadow. You still want to be able to distinguish who it is. Clear characteristics like Sana's giant ass gun are dead giveaways, and you don't even need the rest of the picture to identify that champ. The look of a champion is extremely important. You want them to not only be visible, but also pretty clear. That's what the art is there for. Players should be able to identify these hitboxes the moment that they see them. Riot is currently working on making sure that the visuals match the hitboxes, and they even have plans to update any older artwork that doesn't match their standards today. Another important point that they pay attention to is, once again, hierarchy. How important an ability is should reflect visually. If an ability does tons of damage, it should garner a lot of attention. The example Riot uses for this is Zoe's Q. It's bright and has a very distinct sound. I'm sure we've all had the pleasure of getting one shot by it and can always distinguish this ability amidst any chaos in a fight. Crowd control is similar. Hard CC or CC with long durations should be made clearly visible such as Tarek's stun. When an ability can be dodged, this should also grab the eye of a player. One more example is when the ability has a large impact of play. Think something like Tarek's ultimate and even Kale's ultimate, which are very clear to see. The moment you see them, you know that you need to change up your game plan. That said, when the skin is made, it's crucial. Crucial that these points of clarity remain intact from that clarity We've all been there, as players would have to take more time to determine where they needed to go. In response to this, Riot darkens these lines to make it sure that they'd be more visible. And a big feature of certain skins is that they actually transform. Moving forward, Riot wants to make sure that skins with transformations only display them during home guard animations or empowered states. Arya's Spirit Blossom skin is a great example of this because you can see her full fox form while she's home guarded and can see her human fox form when she ults. And the final point to mention is that cosmetic animations should never provide an advantage. Recalls, dances, taunts, and whatever else the skin may include create flashy effects that move a character's model. However, it's noted that hitboxes should never move, even if the model does during them. Pool Party Renekton appears to pop upwards when he recalls, but his hitbox remains in the same area. Riot has a rule now for future skins that a champion must stay in the recall circle for at least two seconds during the initial animation. Believe it or not, there's a lot of skins that have a history with their animations. One major example is Lancer Blitzcrank. When this skin was initially released on the PBE, players were really disappointed that it didn't have an alternative walking animation. Riot clarified that adding a new walking animation to a champion like Blitz might just mess up with the overall clarity of the champion. Blitz has a very distinct walking animation, and Riot did not want players to second-guess themselves. However, Riot did just release Space Groove Blitz, and he definitely has new animations. When asked about the difference between the two skins, Riot stated in a blog that ultimately, Space Groove Blitz is a legendary skin. This Can typically includes animations. 
sorry saya tadi saya tertutup eh dia punya screen are you there are you all still there yes okay, so let's, let's continue kan. right. so previously we have already calculated the phone dia dah uh, white actual right so this will be the, the output that should be produced kejap by kejap the dia bateri habis uh, so dia beli yang apa tu so now after we have already calculated the white actual we would be able to calculate the y desired here so the error is calculated as y desired, y desired minus y actual so this is just a, a simple print uh, statement right print statement uh, nothing to uh, explain here okay so you can print whatever output that you want and inside here is the uh, weight change all right so weight change so like uh, what your friend mentioned earlier uh, the weight change will only happen if there is an error uh, remember this one so there's a if here to check so if there's an error uh, the weight change will be calculated as delta weight equals alpha times input times error delta weight 2 equals alpha times input two times error so this can also be automated if sorry i think somebody is uh, hold on yeah and then tu ah apa tu um ni baru sampai ni aku geram je nak buka dia kata kat aku macam apa tu uh, tunggu dia balik dulu dia nak buka sendiri dia nak fill unboxing <laughs> yang night mode tu aku tak pasang lah. aku macam just pasang nombor satu semalam lah aku tidur sebab semalam agak agak panas juga lah aku sebab aku start tutup kan so macam nak biasakan dulu lah so aku macam uh, pasang nombor dua eh Nombor satu nombor dua aku tak ingat Nombor satu rasa Then pasal Eva And then aku macam letak lah Then aku tidur macam vertical Nak bagi satu badan aku kena angin lah Sorry for that Okay um, Kat mana tadi? Calculation of weight change Right So when we already calculated the weight change delta weight 1 and delta weight 2 immediately we can update the weight by adding up the uh, initial weight to the calculated weight change so that we can get the final weight so if you notice there's no two different variable for final weight and initial weight because once we have already calculated the weight change the initial weight will be updated with the final weight so basically we are using the same weight value so i don't need to have two different variable for that and then uh, after all the iteration have uh, finished okay so before i finish it i have this one the flag uh, so now uh, i add up uh, the sum of error to any occurring errors so the calculation is error times error okay why didn't we just put simply as error like this uh, why must i multiply error with error can anybody, can anybody tell me ada tak siapa-siapa yang boleh agak kenapa error times error dekat sini the idea of having a sum of error is that if okay you will dengar saya make it positive eh? yes i want to change the value from negative to positive right so the, the idea is that later the while loop happens to come up with this uh uh, example right where all error is zero it will stop however in order for the loop to continue it will detect any error that has been occurring through the iteration all right so let's look at <coughs> epoch number one 
where the error is uh, uh, iteration number three and four, you have different error. You have error negative one and one. If you add these two error, it will become negative one plus one. Anybody? Negative one plus one, the power? Zero, good. So when it becomes zero, the sum of error is zero. So sum of error is zero, meaning that there's no error. Lah. So it will, it will stop at epoch one. However, there's an error here at iteration three and four. So that's the reason why I need to create an absolute value. Right, so to because I know the error will either be one or negative one, so that's the reason why I don't mind multiplying the error with the same value. Um, if you have other uh, error value, you cannot do like this. Right? You can use the absolute function lah. So in in C plus plus, there's an a built-in uh, absolute uh, function, absolute value. So you can use that to change the uh, negative value to a positive value, All right? That's it. So uh, now your perceptron uh, is ready. So let me execute and uh, the program. So similar to what uh, we have already done in our exercise, the perceptron produce five epoch. Okay, produce five epoch, which is um, the final weight is zero point one. So if you can see, there's a small uh, input down here. Okay, waiting for me to punch in my. Hold on. The guild lah, and then not. Okay. Okay. So this uh, input is this one to test the model, all right? So I'm testing my model. I'm testing my model so that when uh, I change my input, it will multiply, will be multiplied with the same weight and threshold that was trained earlier, all right? So let's, let me put it in. One, one, I'll put this one, one, zero. So now the sequence doesn't matter, all right? So it, it doesn't matter how many times I punch in the a different combination of input, it will always produce the correct output of an operation. Okay. Okay, let's stop this one and change. Okay, now uh, the, the perception algorithm is ready. So all I have to do is I, I just need to change the sample. So now I'm changing my sample to an OR operation. Okay, I skip my problem. Again, similar to what we have already done in our previous exercise, the OR operation produces four epoch. Again, when I punch in the sample, it's able to produce the correct output based on the OR operation. Um, depending on which input I kit in to the uh, program. All right? Any question before I explain further? Uh, sir. Yes. Yang threshold tu kan, mm -hmm. they depend on input eh? Threshold yang ini? Threshold this one? Ah, yeah, yeah. Threshold ini adalah constant. Macam yang saya cakap tadi tu. Uh, like the set uh, depend on input eh? Uh, okay, bila dia constant, maknanya dia ada sebenarnya threshold ni macam weight Macam saya explain awal-awal tadi Threshold adalah, uh, kalau kita tengok tadi Again, pergi tengok dekat slide yang ni okay. uh, See threshold times bias, bias ni yang input mm -hmm. Okay, so threshold ni sama macam weight Cuma ni beza threshold ni, dia adalah constant dan tidak di update we won't update the weight and we won't update the threshold. Sebab, okay, uh, in, sebab kalau macam dia negatif hmm. kan, hmm. kita takkan dapat selesaikan the the ni, the ah. pro, pro, problem. Alright, ah. so let's let's see. 
So try to talk. So let's let's create a negative threshold. Execute. Yes. So tak boleh. And how about if I put it in a very small value? Execute compile and run. Pun tak boleh juga. Hmm, uh, how the first uh, apa ni? The error dia dekat the first in, apa? The first input kan macam kosong. Mm. So mm -hmm. image dia tetap kosong. So macam mana nak baiki kalau macam tu? Yang ni. This one. Ha ya ya. Okay. That's the reason why we have the 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 bias the negative bias tadi tu. So negative bias tu yang akan tolong untuk kita uh, adjust this one. So if we look back here okay so delete eh so now uh precious so i have two neuron here and then i have the output here lepas tu bias datang here right so because um Uh, see, nampak tak dekat sini um, Kalau kita um, Sekejap yang saya kena pause Mana tadi dia sudah pas saya Saya kena pause dekat first activation kan Sebab error kan Sekejap um, eh, and for Is it this one? System pause ke? Ah, betul lah sistem pos. Execute, compile and run. Alright, kalau tengok kat sini, because the first, um, apa tu, the first iteration becomes an error, we have to adjust our threshold manually. Right. Itu juga yang, yang you nak, nak tanya? Ah, sebab so maksudnya threshold tu uh, kita set depend on input lah kan? Uh, depend on input. Bukan depend on input. Depend on the compatibility of the first uh, iteration ni. Sebab the first iteration ni dia tak mampu untuk update weight dia. Ah. Okay. Um, if you can see uh, from the equation of the weight addition kan. Kita tengok dekat equation dia weight addition mana tadi. Uh, step number three. Weight change is calculated as alpha times input times error because the first iteration consists of uh, both uh, input zero. So what, whenever you multiply with zero, you will always uh, have a weight change of zero. Okay, even though there's an error here, mana tadi? Let's say execute kan? Compile and run. Ah, ni saya dah betulkan. Error zero. So let me change back to negative 0.1. Okay, even though ada error dekat first ni, dia tak mampu untuk update weight dia. Weight dia will still stay the same. Kenapa? Sebab alpha times input times error. So when I uh, continue with the next iteration, so all other for all other iteration it uh, actually produces a zero error right so the output should be one 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 zero error so what happened is that no uh weight change is happening okay uh, tak ada. Uh, the error won't change so this same iteration is running over and over again right so that's the reason why uh, we have to uh, change the threshold value so that it is compatible dia macam uh, ada main mengelak sikit lah so that's why it is called a bias right so that the bias will be compatible with the first iteration okay so that's the reason why we put a positive uh, threshold here and this value is set up by ourselves 
Alright, kita yang akan set up value ni. Uh, and then, alpha pun sama. We set up the value of alpha. And usually, the value of alpha is set at a very low value. Uh, kenapa alpha ni low value? Nanti sekejap lagi kita tengok. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you sir. Alright. So, just now I've already executed the O operation. O operation boleh. Alright. So what happen if I change the value of alpha? So alpha I change to 0.2. Tadi tu I pop dia 4 kan? Now when I compile and run. Oh sebab saya dah buat ni kan? So now I have my epoch is reduced. Okay, reduced into two epoch. Right, so if let's say I create the end operation, change end operation. Previously, I have five epoch. Now, uh, it is reduced to four epoch. Eh, sorry, masih five lagi. Sorry, dia jadi enam. Ini macam tak habis ni. Something wrong. Let me check. Uh, sebab dia ni, apa ni? Dia punya tu tak precise. Dia punya ni so dia jadi Okay. Wait change, uh, wait change dia tukar. Lepas tu dia tukar balik dia asal. Dia ni eh, sebab dia pause ni. Eh dia, tak tak Dia macam kan uh, input dekat input dekat atas 0.1 kan. Uh, hmm. Input 1 eh uh, 0.1 jadi ada error dia tukar. Lepas tu kat bawah tu dia tukar balik jadi error yang atas. Okay so let me execute again. Dia, dia, dia tak konsisten eh output dia. Tak sebab dia punya change dia tak tak precise. What happened? Threshold saya dah ubah threshold is 4.2. Threshold 0.2. So let me check again. Compile run. Okay. Better. Alright. So sama macam dalam buku kan threshold 0.2 right. So again let me show you alpha 0.1. Execute compile and run. Alright so 5 epoch for alpha 0.1 so when I increase my alpha execute compile and run so now my epoch is reduced right so the uh, basically what is alpha so alpha is learning rate okay so the higher the learning rate the faster the network should learn lah. so that's the reason why the epoch is reduced to three epoch so what if I increase my alpha to 0.3 Execute, compile and run. Ah, dah tak, dah tak boleh dah. Okay. So maknanya um, our network is not able to uh, learn uh, for a higher alpha. Alpha ni um, kalau kita saya ubah balik dengan ni kan. Uh, yang ni oh, operation ni dia, dia compatible sikit. So execute, compile and run. Masih boleh lagi. Right. So even a higher value, um, it is still compatible with a higher alpha, all right? Okay, uh, we know that when we increase our alpha, the network will, will learn faster, all right? So however, even though the, the network learn faster, it becomes unstable, all right? Kenapa unstable? Because the, the weight change is too big, all right? Because the calculation of weight change is alpha times input times error and when we have a higher alpha the the differential weight will be of a high value so what happens is that the network won't be stable they can uh, margin difference of change is so big it cannot find the correct uh, weighted value to produce the correct output right that's why it is unstable lah. Uh, and that's the also the reason why uh, in your notes it is um, advisable for you to have a very small alpha. Okay, now let's look at um, another example in the table which is the exclusive all. Right, if I change my uh, program to an exclusive all here, the same thing will happen, alright? 
Sekejap eh, kenapa tak boleh compile File save Okay, save dah save, execute Okay, compile and run So the program cannot uh, Cannot learn the XOR operation Alright So what happen is it, it tries to iterate uh, Throughout the Samples Okay, when it, it updates the error Immediately uh, when other error comes in, it will revert back to to another way that produce error in in uh, the previous iteration, right? So why does this happen? So let's look at the next slide, which is this one. Okay, okay this is an exp uh, a simple explanation on um, a linearly separable function and a non-linearly separable function. Okay, so imagine um this uh, example right so you have a two dimension uh drawing or graph right where it represent the the number of input so input x1 and input x2 it represent the x1 represent the uh horizontal value x2 represent the vertical value okay so this particular dot means zero zero for both input this one is one zero this one is zero one and this one is one one okay and the black and white dot represents uh the output okay black dot represent output one the white dot represent output zero okay zero 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 so for n operation, you can actually separate the two groups of output, the output of the neural network, to two different groups separated by a linear function. This this one line here, I'll change the line to a red color. The line here is actually a sorry, the really black but. Hmm. this one so the line actually is a linear function that is able to separate uh, the two group of zeros and one similar to all all both sama right i can create one line here so that the output or, or the output generated by network the neural network is separated into two groups of zeros and one okay however for exclusive or i cannot do that i cannot create a linear function here right so even though if, if i take this line if i draw it like this i cannot separate the two groups of zeros and one Boleh. In any way, I cannot separate the two groups. Right, so how should we go about with this? Right, so before I explain that, I would like to show you another example of a three dimension input. Right, so previously we have already learned that Septron have two input x1 and x2. Okay, produce y lah. So what happened if I create another neural network, Perceptron, that has three input? Okay, x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so the dimension would be a little bit different. Lah. So you would have the x-axis. Okay, let me draw it for you. The x-axis here. And then the sorry, x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. All right, so x1, x2, and x3. All right, that's the reason why I have this. Um, uh, drawing here 
in the next slide okay so this will explain if the input is three dimension so can a perceptron learn a three valued input boleh tak rasa rasanya what's your opinion i want to hear your opinion can a perceptron learn a three dimension uh, input boleh boleh as long as as long as uh. as long as it is linearly separable dia tak dia bukan dah n ataupun o lagi dah you can create your own rule okay imagine imagine uh, these are all the eight uh, possible outcome that the network can produce because kita ada eight uh, ada three apa tu three different input kan x1 dengan x2 dengan x3 so the combination is 0 so these are the only combination of of input that is available lah. so it will uh, we will decide whether what are the possible outcome okay so if i want to decide the possible outcome for this uh, problem i want uh, the network to only produce one if all three combination of input are true so kalau ni dia jadi satu the rest is zero okay maknanya sinilah satu and the rest ni akan jadi zero 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 zero, zero. Okay, so can the network learn this function? Yes. Yes. So imagine this particular cube is a cake, for example, ataupun a jelly. Alright. So you can actually slice up this area. You can slice up this area. Okay. Uh, this this area will become something like this, lah. Right. Sliced up. So as long as you can separate the two group linearly, uh, you should be able to uh, perform uh, the process in uh, a, a perceptron, right? Macam ni, habis dah. So never mind, so I'll just... Okay. Mind. So I'll just create a new one here okay what if what if um the problem classification is like this assassin boleh tak can can the network learn this one yes can yes because you can slice it like this okay you slice the bagian sini nanti dia jadi macam ni lah You slice it up. So, how about this one? Boleh tak? Easy, right? So, you just you just split the cube into half, right? So, as long as the network is linearly separable, you can actually uh, train your neural network, right? However, there's a bit of a problem. Um, the If all input is zero, the output must always be zero okay uh, susah sikit untuk you train dia jadi zero yang ni uh, there's a lot of hoops that you have to adjust in order to let your network learn um, uh, something like this lah nak produce ni satu susah sebab imagine um, your your apa tu input will always be zero and you cannot update Uh, your weight because of the equation alpha times input times error kan or you do some sort of changes lah dalam algorithm you sebab you dah tahu kelemahan algorithm you this cannot be updated and you would want to update your weight in order to produce the correct output you would want to change the delta weight if uh, all three Uh, values are zero okay uh, that is something that you can do later all right any question ada soalan 
Tiada Okay Very easy right Okay I won't give you this one um, The program But I will probably give you the Excel that I've shown you earlier Last week um, And I want you to do your own exercise So what I want you to do is On your own time I want you to create your own program it doesn't matter, you don't have to do it in C++. Whatever program that you are comfortable and familiar with, you can use that to do the perceptron program. Okay. I want, you know the process scan? Sekarang you dah faham kan all the steps of the perceptron, right? Faham. Um, um. Okay. So I want you to do this, but with three neurons. Uh, ubah program ni macam kalau you nak buat sama macam saya dia akan ni jadi 8 so you have another variable x3 okay and then you have to make sure that you multiply with the correct activation lah so x3 times with 3 you have another with here right so i want you to do this as an exercise you don't have to submit but i hope that you do this so that you understand better right before when i when i explain it seems that uh, the problem or the program looks so easy can to to do but i want to to for i want you all to try it on your own to create your own program so that you can fully understand uh, how the perceptron works so uh, again yes sir, yes yang 8 tadi kenapa 8 tadi sebab input you ada 3 so bila input you ada 3 dia jadi 8 and ada 8 ni kita tak bukan tambah lagi satu variable eh? Yelah, tambah lagi satu variable x3 oh, okay. uh, Tapi sebab, okay, sekejap eh, saya tunjuk See, nampak? Oh ya, yeah, okay, faham, faham hmm, Sebab x, x3 is the variable uh, 8 is the number of sample Yang ni 4, 4 is the number of sample if The input is 2 kan? So dia jadi 8 sebab kita akan tambah x3 kat sini x3 8 kat sini Dekat kan, saya jauh pula Right, hmm, buat macam ni So dia punya weight pun ada tiga lah Delta weight 1, delta weight 2, delta weight 3 Yang ini dia jadi weight 1, weight 2, weight 3 Okay So try on your own, it should um, Apa tu, in, uh, I want you try out the, the simplest one first uh, Buat yang Yang uh, macam end operation tu kan Hmm, uh, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, cuba tu saya tengok. Okey tak? Yang you dah buat? Ah. Uh. Okey, sekejap eh. Okey, saya stop sekejap. Can you show yours? Uh, uh, saya saya letak dekat chat. Letak dekat chat. Uh. Kalau, kalau nak saya nak tengok program, takut lag lah. Saya takut share screen hmm. lag. Sekejap eh, kita tengok sama-sama. Mm, so let me again share my screen Window Okay, my other screen Alright, so let me read Activation Yang untuk tadi ni output tu saya 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 lupa nak ubah uh, Dia kosong 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 satu You buat pakai Python eh? Apa itu? Okay, input dia kosong satu kosong satu Output dia, okay, you pakai List um, Okay, activation Let me see mana activation you Activation ini kan Okay, point five Ni you test ke point five ni? Ah, saya test Okay So, the real activation should be in here, right? Betul tak? Ah, input yes. times weight Input times weight Sekejap eh, weight you ada dua Input one Input two I K, betul um, Minus threshold, threshold you Point four K Error Training output uh, Training output Okay, training output is Okay, sekarang training output you Ni satu ni, careful 
Sebab saya nak test tadi Oh ok Ok Dia akan jadi finite loop kan? Infinite loop kan? Ah, sebab tengok dia Apa? Ah, positif yeah. ah, Tapi tapi sekarang ni betul lah apa yang buat ni So error training output minus output Okay output dia dekat sini kan Delta width betul, delta width betul hmm, Error times alpha times input sekarang ni width dia akan berubah bila kita dapat delta width. Okay, betul? Hmm, betul lah. Yeah, thank you, sir. Hmm, so you just change to to 8 lah. Okay. Uh, the combination dia pun you kena make sure combination yang betul. You have this, this, this is the combination. Alright. Alright, so um, for the rest of you, if you want to do You can do it um, again in any language that you are familiar with. You feel that see, nampak Python tadi is a bit more um, apa tu reduce the the lebih optimum. Okay, you can try it out uh, um, and make it as a three. Kalau you faham, you sepatutnya boleh buat tiga lah. Uh, dah ada dah contohnya kawan you buat ni. Okay, tengok contoh dia tu, you, you supposedly you should know lah how to create uh, uh, an input uh, greater than two. So input three, so combination dia ada lapan. Alright, lagi ada soalan lain? Before I end the session? Tak ada kot. Jadi sekarang. Tadi macam dia terdengar suara orang Oh uh, tak ada kot, tak ada kot Orang yang lain? How about the rest? Okay kalau All tak ada soalan Yes, come again? All good All good, alright Thank you so, If you don't have any question, I, I, I really want you to do the exercise Even though you don't have to submit it, alright uh, Because uh, uh, The only way for you to to know whether you understand what uh, I've already explained throughout the whole uh, session is that when you do it on your own, um, the program will run smoothly and uh, produce the correct output for you. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we'll meet again tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. sir. Thank, thank you, sir. sir.